Welcome to the Jill on Money Coronavirus Market Update. It is Tuesday, June 16th, and we are celebrating Pride Month today because I, as the host, the lesbian host of this podcast, can't believe that it is June, it's Pride Month, and the Supreme Court has ruled that Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 applies to discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. It was a six to three vote and this is a huge day. So um, as Mark likes to say, uh, now you can't be fired except that I'm not an employee. So not really applicable to me. Congratulations to the people who fought that fight. Happy Pride Month. And we are celebrating here at Jill on Money by being prideful in everything we do. Mark, you know what I forgot to mark? Mark, Mark. Um, I forgot to say that the 14th Sunday, that was our three-month anniversary of going daily. Isn't that amazing? Feels like we've been doing... It's crazy, right? Oh my gosh. Time flies when you're under lockdown. Mark and I might be the last people to emerge from the lockdown. Someone said to me, oh, when when are you going back into the broadcast center? I said, when they drag me in kicking and screaming, because I'm just fine doing this remote work. I really am totally fine. I can talk to you guys every day. I can manage my schedule much more easily. And frankly, it's uh, not that big a difference. You know, maybe the the broadcast quality is not quite as good, but hey, we're talking to you every day. Mark's working his fanny off trying to juggle his kid and his relationship and his cooking and these daily updates and all the stuff that he does. I'm going crazy juggling TV and radio and writing and all that nonsense and walking dogs. And it's all working. Somehow or other, it's working. It's working also because you guys have been fantastic. You keep sending us emails and we are here to answer your questions. Ask Jill at JillOnMoney.com. That is the email address. So, I I mean, you got my attention with this subject line. You ready? What to do with a million dollars in cash? How about that? That's a good problem to have. Shelly writes, your podcast has been keeping me from stressing out too much about the market fluctuations. So thank you for your calming words of advice. My husband, 53, and I, 45, are selling our house in California, and we're moving to the Midwest this summer. That's awesome. We should walk away from the sale with about a million dollars in cash. How do we invest this huge amount in such a volatile market? It's an overwhelming amount of money. We've got no idea how to safely invest it for our, hopefully, early retirement. Here's the statistics. My husband currently makes $140,000 a year and is maxing out his 401k. We have $80,000 in a high interest savings account. That's our emergency reserve fund, one year's worth of expenses. Combined, we have about $650,000 in our retirement accounts. No other debt than the mortgage that will get paid off at the time the house is sold. Thanks for any advice on our nice problem to have. P.S. Here's a bonus pick of our furry kid, Ripley. Oh, Ripley looks like a pit bull, right, Mark? Big tongue hanging out. So sweet. Okay. Sorry. Let me get back to your question. Okay. First of all, Shelly, do you really not need this money? Where are you going to live? Do you need to reinvest some of the money in terms of a a house? So that's number one. Let's presume you don't. Let's say you got a million bucks and it really is a million dollars to invest for your retirement. In that case, I think we've got to work backwards and we've got to figure out a retirement plan for you. So I'd be happy to help you with that. But I wonder if, number one, do you have somebody to talk to and maybe help you run these calculations? If not, have you fiddled around online to make sure that you will have enough money given your ultimate goal of retirement in, I don't know, let's say 10, 15 years-ish? I need to know a lot more about your situation. Once we look at your retirement plan, we put a plan together, then we're going to work backwards. We're going to say, here's how much money we need you to accumulate by the time you're, say, he's 65 and you're whatever, younger. So maybe it's 70 and difference, right? 70 and 62. Then we're going to try to invest to reach that goal. But I think we're kind of uh, putting the cart before the horse. If we don't look at your retirement planning first, then we don't understand what the goal is with the million bucks. So I need more information. I want to know 
whether you've actually run those numbers or not. So let's do that first. Give us a holler back, okay? Thanks for writing. Really appreciate it. Okay. Leslie writes, we're in our 70s, retired, and your comment about keeping money for emergency does not take into account if your income comes from investments or permanent income like pensions, annuities, or social security. Doesn't this make a big difference? Yes, of course, but you still have to have your living expenses in the bank. So if you have pension, annuity, and social security that's just going to go on forever, fine. I'm just talking about the amount of money you don't have. Mark makes a good point because, you know, essentially the emergency reserve is about income, but it's also about unexpected events in your life. So, you know, you could have a an emergency that has nothing to do with income. It could be that your car just clunks out. You need a new car. Then you need to have some pool of money from which to draw. And if all of your money is invested, then you may have to invade that money at the wrong time. That's all. Don't be, it sounded sort of like angry also a little bit, right? Mark had a little edge, like, doesn't that make a difference? So, okay, it might make a difference. Everyone calm down. You know what? Today I snapped on somebody, Mark, at work. It was just an annoying thing. And I snapped on somebody and I wrote down, calm down in all caps. And then I wrote, LOL, just kidding. And then I had to call and say like, I'm sorry, I really did snap on you. But I snapped because I think we're all, we've had it. We've all just had it with requests and this and that. And so I'm sure this lady's reading my my uh, column in the paper and is like, why is this girl seeing that, you know, like in a bad mood and then writes right in that moment. It's just, by the way, saying calm down to somebody is never a way to calm somebody down good lesson for me. Take that under advisement, Jill. Okay. Rebecca writes, my financial plan from here at 54. Okay. Ready for this? This is what Rebecca says. I did have one and a half million dollars in Wells Fargo stock and I lost $500,000. I think my stomach hurt right now. I've since put the uh, remaining dollars with a stockbroker who has a diversified what is left. I also own an apartment building with a two and a half million dollar mortgage, and I'll probably net three million bucks when I sell it in a year. That's great. Rebecca says she makes 40, 75 grand a year, including all the write offs. I heard you mention that three million dollars will only net about seventy five thousand dollars a year. So here's what I said if you had a million dollars, generally speaking, you could generate about thirty to thirty five thousand dollars a year from that money. Now, in the case that you're talking about, this person who had $3 million, some of it was retirement money. So we had to account for the fact that a retirement account generates income, but you have to pay tax on it. So that's why the person that you heard me talk about was somebody who had more money in retirement than non-retirement. Okay. So the reality is you need to figure out how much you need with expenses going up and inflation. So you need to look at a financial plan. So here, this is like consistent today. Today's podcast is brought to you by the need for a financial plan and mostly a retirement plan. You say you're working with a uh, broker. Well, is that broker somebody who can actually run some retirement numbers for you? If not, you really need to run those numbers. And in your case, maybe the $3 million plus the million dollars you have from your Wells Fargo stock will be plenty of money. But I don't know. We'll have to see. You've got to run the numbers. Running the numbers is like stepping on the scale. You've got to know where you stand, right? And you may not like the numbers. You may like the numbers. Could be okay. But you got to actually do something. You've got to measure where you are, project where you need to be, and then you can come up with a plan of action. Richard, what's your recommendation for a $100,000 annuity? We're 68. We want to be paid immediately. We would like some floor guarantee, and we do not want to pay more than 1% a year. Any ideas? Well, I mean, I guess you could do an immediate annuity, Richard. Um, you could try to pick a low cost one. If you want to get paid immediately, an annuity might do it, but you're going to lose the access to that hundred grand. And I don't know if you can do that or not. That's really predicated on your situation and what other assets you might have. Margaret writes, I love reading your column and today's topic regarding an emergency fund struck a chord with me as we will finally be able to set one up after we settle in July on the sale of our investment rental property. Yay. We have some significant credit card debt to pay off as well with the money that we've earned. My question for you, can you explain the rules on options to avoid paying capital gains taxes? Do we have two years to invest that roughly $40,000 we would owe the government into another property? We will be applying 
for financial aid for our first child to go to college in the fall of 2021. We're trying to be smart about assets. We would love to have that money continue to work for us rather than simply pay the tax. Thanks so much. I appreciate your time and consideration. Well, I mean, you need the money to pay off the credit card debt, right? And you need the money for an emergency reserve fund. So here's what I'm going to suggest. Pay the tax due and don't worry about it. You need liquidity. You need access to your money. So I would say it's more important that you actually do that than tie up the money in another real estate venture in order to avoid taxation. I say pay the tax and move on. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right. It is yet another day. It is Tuesday. Uh, And you know what? It's going to be one of those crazy weeks. I just have the sense of it. It's early on. If you need some help distilling the news, understanding what's going on, figuring out what you need to do in your financial life, just send us an email. Ask Jill at JillOnMoney.com. Ask Jill at JillOnMoney.com. Don't forget, keep hearing about these cases spiking up. My mother just told me she was in New York City and she saw what she called a bunch of dopes sitting too close together outside on the sidewalk eating. Okay, mom, I promised that I would tell everybody not to do that. So don't do that. Listen to my mother. Susan knows best. Stay away. Maintain that social distancing. Wash your hands, wear your masks, and do something nice for somebody else. Put your hands on someone's back. Lift somebody up. Please try to do that today. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.